Unfortunately, uh, this year we have had a ton of journalists killed. Let me give you the exact numbers uh, towards the end of the story. But unfortunately, this week we had another one killed, this time in Turkey. And I want to tell you a little bit about it. We should celebrate the lives of all of these incredibly brave people who are trying to bring us information, knowledge, and facts on the ground. So we go to the Huffington Post. Syrian documentary filmmaker and journalist Naji Jerf was killed in Turkey on Sunday, according to local media and a statement from the Committee to Protect Journalists, a nonprofit group. Turkish media reported that an assailant shot Jerf to death on the street during the day in the border city of Gaziantep. It's a lot of people killed by seemingly, apparently, ISIS in the middle of Turkey in broad daylight. And golly gee, the Turkish government never seems to be able to do anything about it. When they want to fight uh, Kurdish separatists, they roll in the tanks. When it comes to protecting uh, Syrian journalists, Kurdish peace protesters, massive bombing that they say ISIS did, killed over 100 people in the middle of the country, I mean, right there, no protection, no protection at all. Uh, another uh, Kurdish civil rights, human rights uh, leader shot dead in the middle of the day, no protection. Okay. Jerf's death is part of a series of killings uh, that have targeted Syrian journalists and activists in recent months, both within Syria and across the border in southern Turkey. Huffington Post explains further, some of the victims have been members of the award-winning uh, citizen journalist group Raqqa is being slaughtered silently, including one of its founders, Ibrahim al-Qadir, uh, who was murdered in late October. So this is not just Jerf, uh, it is a number of journalists systematically being killed in this area. Uh, along with his work with RBSS, Jerf was the editor-in-chief of Henta, an independent monthly publication covering Syria, and the creator of a documentary film on the Islamic State killings in Aleppo that was released last week. Uh, more details here, Abu Ibrahim al-Raqqawi, a spokesman for RBSS, told The Telegraph that he believed members of the Islamic State militant group killed Jerf because of his link to the collective. So, interesting uh, point made by Joe Concha at Media. Um, credit where credit is due, you know, he, he and I have disagreed on some political issues domestically, but he made a very interesting point in this regard uh, with the journalist. With the advent of social media, both sides, unfortunately, in, in warfare now, feel like they don't need the journalist. Oftentimes in the past, one side would want to get their news out. But now, ISIS thinks, I don't want you reporting the news. I'll report it in my way. I'll do it through social media. I'll put it on the web. I'll put it on Twitter. Uh, I, if I want to show beheadings, which they view to be a positive marketing for them, which is unbelievable, they're like, I'll put it on Twitter. I don't need you. And you might report something I don't like, so I'm going to murder you. You're going to talk about the atrocities I did in Raqqa? Well, I'm going to do more atrocities by killing you. Imagine the courage that it takes to do that. Now, oftentimes, by the way, the government doesn't want them there either. Well, we're in the middle of war. We're going to break some eggs. I don't want any journalists around. Now, in an unrelated uh, story, Turkish tanks are rolling into some of their own cities fighting against uh, Kurdish separatists. Um, now, they don't allow any press in there. Why? Because they don't want you to see where the tanks are hitting. So apparently now nobody wants to press, and that's why they're getting murdered left and right. And in this case, even more tragic, he knew he was in trouble. Jerf, his wife, and their two children had supposedly received visas granting them asylum in France. His friend told uh, AFP he had been planning to fly there this week. I mean, obviously, before he had a chance to do that, he was killed in the middle of the street. Now, to give you a sense of how bad it's gotten for journalists this year, in 2015, the number of journalists' fatalities has risen to 110, an increase of 46 deaths in the community since the year before, a 40% increase. Media continues to explain uh, the numbers this year also extend beyond those considered to be professional journalists. Of the 110 deaths, 27 non-professional citizen journalists were also killed. This number includes four Bangladeshi bloggers hacked to death by a branch of Al-Qaeda for simply advocating tolerance, free speech, and freedom. I've said this before, but it certainly bears repeating in this case. Uh, whether it's professional members of the press or these bloggers who are advocating something as simple as tolerance, 
free speech and freedom are the most courageous people on earth. To go in there, it's so easy for someone like me to do it sitting in a studio in Los Angeles, easiest thing in the world. For them to go there and blog about it in Bangladesh knowing that they're taking their life into their hands. Yes, this message is simple and it should be one that the whole world should accept, tolerance, freedom for individuals. But a lot of people don't ex uh, ex accept it and these folks know it and they're brave enough to say it in the face of monsters like this. And unfortunately a lot of them pay a heavy, heavy price for it and this year it got worse than ever. Uh, however you can support the true heroes of journalism and the press, you should do so. These guys are the bravest guys on earth.